Welcome back to Movie Shorten. Today we are going to explain a 2001 American comic science fiction film called Evolution. Be aware, there are spoilers. The story takes place in a small town by the desert in Arizona, USA. At the beginning of the movie, a meteor falls to the earth from space. Meanwhile, Wayne, a young firefighter, drives his car to an abandoned house in the desert carrying a doll in the middle of the night. While practicing for the fireman exam with the doll, he sees a meteor coming closer to the ground. He hurriedly runs away and is lucky to survive in the nick of time. He falls to the ground and his car is blown away. The scene transitions to a biology class in a Glay Canyon Community College. Our protagonist, Ira Kane, is returning homework to the class. Most of the students get an A. Only the Donald brothers are wondering why they only got C minuses. Ira explains that he couldn't do anything because the two exams are too boring. A colleague of Ira, Harry Block, a geography teacher got informed about the meteor while talking to a student. Harry claims himself as Glay Canyon, representative of the U.S. Geological Survey, which he signed up on the internet. The duo rush to the scene in the desert and find Wayne with his broken car. As they approach the point of penetration and come to the underground, Ira and Harry are fascinated by the peculiar beauty of the meteorite. So, they decide to take a scientific sample for research. At night, in his office, Ira sees a microorganism that was dividing at a breakneck speed, and soon the petri dish is broken. He puts the statistics into his computer and finds that alien DNA has 10 base pairs, while all of the living organisms on Earth have only 4 base pairs. Their metabolic rates are off the charts. That's incredible. The next day, Ira shows Harry the discovery. At this time, the cells have grown into a more complex organism. In other words, they evolve into multicellular organisms. It only takes them a few hours to evolve, while on Earth it takes 200 million years. Harry gets excited about the discovery and even expects a Nobel Prize. Back to Wayne, the poor guy falls asleep during his fireman exam and gets rejected. 18 hours after the collision, Ira and Harry lead their students for a field trip. When they step down to the point of penetration, there are plenty of rudiment plants and dense smoke on the ground. The stench emanates from the methane and sulfur gas, which makes this place smell disgusting. It seems like they are converting the atmosphere here. They also discover millions of flatworms crawling on the ground, hiding under dense smoke. More specifically, the worm dies after being exposed to the normal atmosphere. Oxygen might have killed it, they assume. The group leaves the scene, not forgetting to take some samples of the flat worms. By the time they reach the school, the worms have multiplied exponentially. Kane and Harry decide to keep it a secret and study them further later. Meanwhile, Wayne now becomes the pool manager of a country club after miserably failing his fireman exam. He then discovers many flatworms crawling up from the cracks on the ground and also sees a strange fish-like creature swimming in the water pipe system. Ira and Harry are on their way to the desert and get stopped by an army gatekeeper. It turned out that the military soon barricaded the crash site and turned it into a research station. One of the guards, after learning that Ira is Ira Kane, immediately pulls out his gun and is ready to fire. However, his chief instantly stops the trouble then lets Ira and Harry in. Remember this detail. Later on, the duo are greeted by Ira's former colleague, Russell Woodman, head of U.S. Army Research, who is in charge of the site. Kane and Russell used to work together at the Pentagon for Army Research. A quick glimpse reveals Russell was secretly monitoring Ira's computer and knew his secret. There, they met Dr. Allison Reed from CDC. She assists Russell on this project. Russell appreciates the discovery of Ira and Harry, but later he wants to keep them in the loop and take control of the whole site. Ira and Harry, however, consider that to be unfair as they were the first to discover the meteor. They decide to sue Russell for abuse of power over taking control of the site. Unfortunately, Ira is deposed for having a bad history of experimental anthrax vaccines that he made at USAM RIID from 1994 to 1997, known as Kane's Madness. It caused 150,000 soldiers to develop horrible side effects such as memory loss and severe diarrhea. After their defeat in court, Ira and Harry return to the office, only to find out that all the results and samples have been stolen. They plan to sneak into the base camp at night to take them back. Upon getting inside, they are overwhelmed by the underground alien ecosystem that was just a plain desert three weeks ago. Unfortunately, they get caught when trying to snag a creature. Harry is then penetrated by a giant mosquito. Allison and Ira help him out and it takes him some time to recover. 
In the meantime, a guest in the country club where Wayne is working is dragged and eaten alive by a dinosaur-like creature in a lake nearby. Back to Ira, he is now explaining his motives, how desperate he was after getting exiled in Arizona. That's why he wants to research this alien meteor and take a chance to get back on his feet. Wayne takes the dead dinosaur-like creature to Ira and Harry because he thought they might be able to help. He found it on the sand while it was choking to death. During this time, Ira meets Allison and convinces her to kill the alien creatures before they spread out. She thinks Ira is overreacting. It's clear that something has sparked between the two of them. Ira, Harry, and Wayne find a suspicious animal attack report while the trio are hanging out. At the scene, four housewives were horrified when a seemingly harmless animal had bitten one of their hands. The animal got choked and died shortly thereafter. When the three of them arrive, they even discover something more shocking than that. There are dozens of pterosaur-like animals dying on the ground after getting out from a cave. The group learns that these creatures must have evolved from the meteor. They have spread to a radius of several miles underground at a rapid speed because the caves in the canyon are linked together. At this time, one of the pterosaur-like creatures has evolved way more differently. It is now able to adapt to breathe Earth's atmosphere and become oxygen tolerant. It then flies around the town and destroys everything in its way. The trio are present and ready to fire at it. The creature grabs a girl in the changing room and hovers in the center. Fortunately, the three make it to rescue the girl and kill the monster. The incident quickly draws attention from the TV and the people. The governor immediately arrives and sees Russell to investigate the truth. Allison is at the site and points out that things are happening faster than imagined. They have to destroy the entire underground alien ecosystem within a radius of a few miles. Otherwise, the aliens will invade the entire United States within two months at this speed, and humans are going to go extinct. Ira, Harry, and Wayne appear at the site. After some quarrels with Russell's side, they reach an agreement to evacuate 10,000 citizens and destroy the alien ecosystem growing underground. Russell comes up with the idea to use napalm, but encounters disagreements from Ira. They still don't know how the alien organisms react with fire anyway. Suddenly, they find a group of alien apes smashing the camera and starting to go to the surface to challenge humans. One of the apes catches Wayne, but it gets shot dead on the spot. The governor is terrified and gives Russell all control to fire the aliens. Russell kicks Ira's group out, causing Allison to leave him and join with Ira. The whole town is quickly evacuated, creating a chaotic scene. Ira, Harry, Wayne, and Allison return to the school lab where they try to find a way to kill these aliens. While smoking, Harry accidentally drops a burning match on the petri dish, causing it to form many long, weird tentacles. They realize that the collision between Earth's atmosphere with the meteor caused fire, which catalyzed the birth of these alien lives. Thus, using napalm will create nothing but a catastrophe. They attempt to call Russell to inform him about the important discovery, but he refuses to talk at the time. The team has to take action by themselves to save the town. In the meantime, the Donalds brothers walk in and give them some beers. Ira got the idea when looking at a print of a periodic table of chemical elements on Allison's shirt. If organisms on Earth are carbon-based and arsenic can kill us, then nitrogen-based organisms can be killed with selenium. But where to find selenium in large amounts in the middle of the night? The Donalds brothers for the first time give a genius solution, using the selenium sulfide in Head & Shoulders shampoo. Wayne has a fire truck. They team up and attempt to give it a shot. They fill the fire extinguisher with a large amount of shampoo and set out to fight the monster. When reaching the meteor site, they all step down to the cave carrying the pipe while Wayne stands outside and waits for the signal to pump shampoo into the cave. A group of primates shows up and attacks them. At that time, Russell was faster. He orders to blow up the cave with tons of napalm bombs. The cave is immediately filled with thousands of moving giant tentacles. Ira and the group run off to the ground to escape. The governor, the army, and the people thought that this threat would be eliminated. But worse things happen. The explosion forces an evolutionary response. It creates a giant flatworm that emerges from the ground, like the way they reacted to a match in the lab. All the bombs and bullets of the army don't work well with this. They fall back. Iris' group must act quickly and find a point to attack before the worm duplicates. They manage to get beneath the worm's belly and find a hole to pour all the shampoo inside. The worm greets them with a huge, nasty release gas from its bowels. When the ladder is raised to the hole, Harry successfully inserts the pipe into the hole with Ira's help. Wayne unlatches the bolt and pumps into the worm. It's funny that Harry used to get penetrated by an alien mosquito. Now, he is doing the same thing with a giant alien worm. Moments later, the worm staggers and begins to swell. Fortunately, Ira's team manages to escape before the giant worm explodes into multiple pieces 
and slime sprays all over the desert. Kane's group successfully defeated the monster. They are praised in public. Wayne becomes a fully credentialed firefighter. Harry Kane himself snuck out and gave Allison a dose of Kane madness. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.